There's a lot of wacky and weird roguelike games out there. Games that you play and you think, how could they make this game into a roguelite? And then you play it and you find yourself getting addicted to it just like that. Really, it happens to the best of us. Recently for me, it was Curse the Golf, a golfing game with roguelike elements. And that game was great. Got all the achievements, beat the game, and was very happy with my purchase. But recently, I may have discovered one of the wackiest roguelike games I've played yet, and that's Played Up. This little wacky adventure was made by the development team, It's Happening. And this is their first and only game available. Played Up seems to have been in development since early 2021, as the first tweet made by the Twitter account shows some very early footage of the game. And then the game had a lot of updates on Steam and a handful of play test before being fully released on August 4th of 2022. No early access for this game, but along with the solo developer, the game was published by Yogg's Cast Games, with a handful of other silly looking games published, with their most well known probably being Cave Blazers, as it has the most reviews on Steam. But Played Up is overtaking the game in reviews pretty fast and for good reason. The game does have some charm to it. Well, what is Played Up? It's a permadeath roguelike game where your goal is to feed every customer in your restaurant every single day. And if one customer is not served, your restaurant gets shut down and you have to start over at day one. Sounds pretty challenging, right? The gameplay is pretty simple. Before you start your run, which lasts 15 days, you pick a floor plan for the restaurant and an item to cook. Now the starting item is a steak and you can cook the steak in three different ways, depending on what your customer wants. Really, it sounds a little confusing, but the tutorial covers it pretty well, I'd say. Every customer you feed gives you money, which allows you to buy more equipment like counters, sinks, more dining tables, even cosmetic things like paintings or plants, which can help make the customers more patient. And you can buy these things after every day as once a day is complete, a handful of blue envelopes spawn with random items. The items are pretty expensive compared to how much you make, so you need to be careful on deciding what you want to include in your restaurant. The game is nice enough to allow you to store one blueprint at a time in a locker, and you can even upgrade some of them. And while you're deciding on what equipment you can buy, you can reorganize your entire restaurant to your liking. Now, during the day, the gameplay is still very simple. These yellow blobs come in, you take their order, you cook their food the way they want, and then you serve it. Sometimes they leave a mess, and then depending on how far into the run you are, they may want dessert, which could stress you out. You need to be pretty good at managing a lot of things at once in this game and thinking one step ahead. You gotta make sure all the customers don't get too impatient and leave, because if one customer leaves, <laughs> It's game over. I make a lot of videos on roguelite games because that's what I'm pretty comfortable doing and I enjoy it. Now you're probably wondering, where the hell was the roguelite aspect in this game? We're getting there, I promise. I just wanted to give you a quick overall of the core gameplay because the roguelite elements in this type of game, they're pretty minimal, but they affect the game just enough. So as your run progresses, you gain stars for your restaurant and every star you gain ends up giving you more XP at the end of the run. And in the run, with every star gained, you are given a choice between two options to implement into your restaurant. Sometimes it's adding a new course on the menu, dessert, or the diners have a little less patience. That's all really inside of a run. As the days go on, you get more customers and it gets a little bit harder, but a run can take you about an hour or two, depending on how far you get. But once you fail a run and level up, you can gain new recipes that you can start with, new blueprints for a better start in kitchen, and even more items to start your next run with. I'll say the power sink is definitely my favorite starting item so far. It cleans those dishes so fast. Really, that's all the roguelite elements in this game. Nothing too serious, really. Don't get too upset in the comments saying it's not actually a roguelite game. Listen, one of its tags on Steam is roguelite, so don't mind me saying it's the wackiest roguelite I've played yet this year. But the little roguelite element is not the most unique thing about the game, and it's not even the best selling point in my opinion. Looking at a game like this, you can easily tell it's a good game to play with friends. And there isn't too many roguelites out there that are super co-op friendly. Of course, there are a few like Gunfire or Reborn or Risk of Rain too, but those are shooter games and not as family friendly, really. Not everybody's a fan of shooters. And with that said, Played Up is still a fun solo game, but I can imagine it's 10 times more fun with one friend or even a group of friends to play with. As I'll say, it's pretty hard by myself. I've gotten to day 14 out of 15 in a run, but it was just too much for me to handle. And if I had an extra person with me, I would have easily won. I say that, but I assume the game gets harder if you have more people with you, but it's all in good fun. Nothing too serious about it. The game's only available on Steam, it seems, but does have remote play, which allows you to share it with a friend for free. Along with co-op though, it does have another more unique feature that we've seen in previous games like Cult of the Lamb, and that's Twitch integration, which I think is still a genius thing to do for these games. You saw how popular Call to the Lamb was and still is, and one big thing that helped was Twitch integration. And I'll say Played Up's integration isn't as good as Call to the Lamb, but really, they're two completely different games. I'm impressed it even has it to begin with. The integration is simple. You connect your Twitch account, let some random thing access all your data, probably as usual, and then people in your Twitch chat type a command, and they can come eat at your restaurant and order anything on the menu. Another Twitch integration feature that I personally haven't experienced yet is the ability for your Twitch chat to give you bits on Twitch, which is basically just money, and then those bits get converted to tips in the game. 
it helps incentivize the viewer and the streamer to play the game more hell i know i got more incentivized to play this game when i learned it had twitch integration just makes it a little more fun that's really all the game has to offer but what do i think about it you ask well that's a good question i think it's good fun i'm always skeptical about these types of graphics in a game which i know is kind of mean to say but when i see these types of models i assume it'll be a silly party game that is most fun with friends like gang beast by the way i did not enjoy that much i never played with friends but i it didn't seem that fun sorry gang beast but played up as a game i find enjoyable even when i'm by myself i don't know how long that'll last but it was definitely a surprise for me the gameplay was fun and a little stressful and a lot of people compare it to overcooked which i've never played personally but i know if i want to play a more relaxed roguelite for an hour or two i can play this instead of stressing out on skull the hero slayer or hades like every game i talk about though on this channel it's not perfect i had my fair share of unenjoyable moments or just some things that could use some fixing but overall for what the game is it's not a lot some mechanics of the game are poorly explained and sometimes you get stuck on the customers and other small things i'll also personally say it can be hard to justify 20 dollars for a little game like this but that's just me personally i would gladly pay 20 dollars for a little cute game like curse the golf but then i'll hesitate for something like this i could even have more replayability because that's just me i'll say that this game does have an overtime mode which makes it harder once you win your first run which is a nice touch to see how chaotic your restaurant can become and it adds some good replayability but overall played up is definitely one of the wacky roguelites i've played and i'm glad i played it and as always thank you for watching this video and big shout out to the people that support me on patreon as always i always appreciate the support on patreon twitch youtube everything i'm one guy trying to make these videos whenever i can i try to upload videos like once a week but it's really hard doing everything and sometimes it's just i don't have a lot of games to play but this one was a fun little surprise so i thought i'd make a video on it see you next time